Hello everyone, I'm Sue with Irreversibly Moi and today we are thrilled to have with us Anna Dabrowski, I hope I said that right, uh, also yeah, known as Finn or Finnebear. Uh, we're thrilled yep. to have her with us today and get to know her a bit better. So welcome and Anna, uh, also known as Finn, why don't you tell yep. us a little bit about you? Um, well, most of people already know me as Finn, so that would be the easiest way, I guess, to address me. And, um, well, I'm a mixed media artist, and designer, product designer, and basically that will, my main job will be teaching classes. So uh, th these are the three things I do. I'm teacher, mixed media artist, and designer. I work mostly as a freelance designer, but I launch uh, my lines with Primo Marketing, so you know my mixed media line, hopefully. Uh, because we did it last year, I have some of the other collections, and I work with some uh, Polish company uh, called Seven Dot Studio, which is a paper company. So that's what I do. And hmm, in my private life, I just moved two years ago from Poland to Ireland. I live in a small town, and um, I have one husband, two dogs, one cat, and. Uh, that will be it, I guess. That's, that's my whole family now. <laughs> okay, great. I have several dogs and several cats myself. Yeah, well, so, they're great companions, really. <laughs> they are. Well, um, how long have you been doing mixed media art? Not so long. Uh, some people think it, it was really long time. When, but I really started doing basic kind of mixed media in 2000 and 9, 2010. Before that I was doing mostly some basic home decors, a little bit of the mm, mini albums making, uh, a little bit of scrapbooking, but it was all very basic because mostly we were very limited in this time with the access to the art supplies, with, to the especially the scrapbooking supplies uh, in Poland. So. It was really hard to find a supply that would be really pleasing. So I remember the time when we had to buy everything on eBay. There were no shops. Now it's all huge and beautiful industry. So you can get everything. And for us, it was very limited. So that would be sure. 2009, 2010 for me. And um, that was the beginning of the really exciting journey. How did you get started in mixed media? By accident, like most of people, I guess. Um, I was trying to find a way how to put all these dimensional elements I liked on my project. And it wasn't really easy because I was trying several things like nails, screws, I was trying brads, of course, I was trying uh, some of the glue, but it didn't work properly. And I really loved this dimensional look with a lot of metal elements. So I was ripping apart clocks and um, using a lot of uh, you know flea market findings and all these didn't really want to stay properly in place until by accident I bought a jar of modeling paste and I had no idea what that is I have no artistic training I was I'm just not really curious so I opened the jar uh, I found out it is white and it is sticky and apparently it was the solution, so I just started using modeling paste to put things together and then experimenting with the sprays on the top to see what is the effect. And that was my solution, to be honest. Uh, once I ran out of the modeling paste, I went to the art shop because I was trying to replace it with something. And then I discovered that there is a difference between modeling paste and the gel. And next time I bought gel, which was even better because it was transparent. And that was it. It was just like snowball effect because I kept trying new effects and I was mixing different um, different uh, mediums. I was trying to see what is the difference between them. It was like playing in a lab because I had um, I had to learn everything just by experimenting. That was so cool, and I still love this process. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It becomes so exciting when you find something new and start playing with it and see what it can do. Absolutely. Yes, that's really great. And, you know, YouTube or uh, basically internet forums are great help. But in the time when I was starting, I wasn't really aware how big the community is. 
So right. I didn't even know that it's so, so easy to find the resources. I could I was following a couple of people and I was looking at the projects they did and I really liked the effect. But I was trying to find my ways to get something, maybe not exactly similar, but something inspired by that. And um, right. that was how I was trying to get into the dimensional look I, I really liked. And sometimes playing yourself allows you to really understand the process and, and figure yeah. it out a little better rather than watching somebody else. Um, yes, I actually have. I actually yep. have your map shell, and I swear by this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy I you like it. it. You know, the, all of them were in fact. Um, it took us a quite long time to get the formulas right because I wanted them to be working with the techniques I like to use. So um, right. it was, you know, the matter of finding the right consistency, the right color. Like they have to be really transparent, or they have to be really white. And that takes time. People think it's like, whoo, done. You just it comes no, out from no. your head and it you know appears in front of you on the table. It's not like that. It was it were no. it was not I'm just trying to think over a year and a half of the process of developing the these into this wow. um, uh, line you you can see now. Mm -hmm. so I love it. It works very well with what I do and um, I've tried a lot of them. And once I found this purely by accident, then I was hooked. So it's my it's usually now. like that. We find we find nice stuff by accident, and then uh, we right. just start from this point. <laughs> That's what right. happened to me in my space years ago. Yeah. How would you describe mixed media art to someone who is not quite um, familiar with mm -hmm. it? I think I was trying to think about the best word to describe it, and I would probably say it's free, totally freestyle collage. Mm -hmm. It's freestyle collage. Well, that's because, good yes, because yeah. you use collage techniques, which is gluing elements which are found, which are um, taken from something else, sometimes finished objects such as you know books, uh, newspapers. Um, sometimes real dimensional objects like home decor uh, stuff, jewelry, yes. and you mix it in totally freestyle and personal way. That will be this, but on the top of that you also add um, this touch of artistic medium. So there are paints, um, gels, um, crayons, pencils, all these sorts of uh, color mediums and sticky mediums included, which means you just play with whatever you can to get the effect that will be pleasing and um, you know expressing your personality. But it's all about right. you know the recycling, repurposing, finding your way of using the stuff that is already somewhere there. You don't have to develop everything you can create from the scratch from the little pieces that you have somewhere. You don't have to have a full sheet of paper. You just, you know, you need small pieces. That's how it is. I love that describing that as freestyle collage. That makes a lot of sense. That's great. Well, <laughs> uh, well I, I think it's not a very professional description, to be honest, because I heard a lot of theories. It's, in fact, about mixing colorful mediums and, in fact, mixing the uh, real art supplies in a special manner. But uh, I think that would be the easiest way to explain it to the totally somebody totally new. Right. How? Um, what advice would you give someone who's starting out uh, playing with mixed media? Uh, just to be fearless. Okay. Just, you know, be, being brave and being fearless. That's the that's the only advice I can give to anyone doing anything, not even mixed media, any kind of craft right. or art, because this is all about fun and it's all about discovering what is exciting for you. Um, it's about playing and relaxing because I can see so many people getting stressed about the process ex instead of being, you know, elated and happy and relaxed and just having all the right. sense this is. Something that you do for yourself, not really. Right. It's not, as I said to my students, it's not a beauty contest. We are in the classroom to experiment, to play, to learn the techniques, and then when you go home, you might think how to make it in the way that will be uh, appealing to you. In the classroom, right. it's 
playing. So the same for the beginner. Let yourself play. Feel the wind in your hair. Just you know, do something that is pleasing. Uh, find um, something like the effect you would like to achieve, and try to think how to get to this effect. Instead of following somebody, you may discover your own way, which will be you know inventive, new, um, and so fun to do. So being fearless. Right. That will be. That's great well, advice. It's a great advice. Well, in the worst situation, you just take your piece from your table. If it's a total disaster, you just throw it away and you start over. Right. Right. And, and if you're getting stressed, then you walk away because it should be fun. It should be play. Yeah. So. It should be fun, and it's I think the most important factor of it because uh, if the, if there's no fun, there's nothing left, right? Because if you created something beautiful, but you, and you're stressed, okay, you've got a beautiful piece of art in the end. But if you stress so much and it's still a disaster, you had nothing, no good, like, right. no good time, no piece of art, and uh, just being angry that it didn't work. So why stress? It doesn't right. really help. Right. Absolutely. What inspires you to create? Oh. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> and that, that's probably the answer you hear from everybody. Um, I just, um, you know, I have things that are naturally appealing to me. I love old books. I loved mm. old photos. I love old pieces of um, mechanical um, elements. I love old cameras, uh, clocks, mm. engines. Comp I even love computer parts. I, I okay. think. Uh, what is really um, inspiring is the way that you can pick up the things that are usually not appealing to anyone or just being simply overlooked by people, put them together and create something unusual that will that will be stunning in the in the end of the process. Not maybe for everybody, but for me, sometimes I'm really surprised how the things together look in the end of the process because I don't plan my projects that much as people think. Um, some I have the general idea sometimes what I'm willing to do but um, the detail is not that important and sometimes during the process these pieces just naturally start to go together. They have their own plan. I just put them uh, the way they want to be put there and when I when I have them in my uh, in, uh, in my background glued I just add the paints and it all changes into something totally different. So that is extremely inspiring. And I love, I love to watch Absolutely. people uh, picking the things that are usual, such as, you know, old pages from the books or just images of something really common and changing them into art. Because that, right. that is, you know, the way of showing that you can really use everything. You don't have to have uh, very expensive supplies. You don't have to have... Uh, this particular piece of embellishment you can create with the things you've got on your in your table. That's that's the right. point. I think. Great. What do you create um, most of the time? Is it home decor? Is it jewelry? What are your favorite things to create? Collage, <laughs> which okay. is, it is a very very um, big category, but basically collage, which means. Uh, collage on canvas. Uh, some people would say it's more assemblage than collage because I assemble the things and um, that will be my natural way of creating. I just pick up the small elements and glue them together. That will be on the piece of wood, on the stretched canvas, on the canvas panel, um, sometimes on the cover of the book, uh, sometimes on some other object like home decor. But like if I had to name my first biggest love would be the collage, just dimensional um, stretched canvas collage on some or, or something similar to it. I and would imagine your home <laughs> art journal. You can see. That was my next question. <laughs> I would imagine your home is filled with beautiful artwork that you've created. Um, if you can see behind me, you can see some of them on the wall here, probably. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, so these gorgeous. Are the big ones. So these are the big ones, and that it's really hard to, you know, to give them away. Some people ask me if I sell my work, but it's so hard to price to put a price on the 
uh, on something that took me such a long time to finish, I just keep them on my wall and I, well, once I will feel I'm done with them, I will think about selling my art, but I, I'm not ready yet, I think. Uh, I understand that. They become a piece of you when they've taken so much to create. So, yes. Um, it's do very art journal. Yes. I'm sorry. You do art journal. I do, but again, my art journal will be, again, probably not really the way people usually journal because um, I journal in two different ways. I have uh, two different ways of creating pages. So one way will be more like traditional, um, maybe a bit like visual scrapbooking when I work with the photos of my family and I really like using the vintage objects together with these photos. And that will be more like family journal I keep doing for over a year and a half now. So I have my favorite photos and I use them to arrange something, to show the love and to get connected with my family because now when we are uh, far away, it's just really important for me to work with the pieces that remind me of my family who is still somewhere in Poland or they're already passed away, they're my grandparents, my grand grandparents, so that is one of the way how I uh, journal. The second, it will be just creating a lot of textures, more abstract way, creating textures, working with photos again, um, but in more flat, flat way. Um, it's always very emotional and it's always very visual. I don't really use much of the journaling as it is. I don't really write a lot of text in this. It's all about expressing myself uh, with the images, colors, right. the textures, not really with the text. Text is just one of the, you know, art, like pieces of uh, background, to be honest. Right, right. I don't really put a lot of writing in my art journals either. It's yeah. more of an artistic expression for me. Uh, do you use a, an actual art journal or do you bind your own journals? Uh, I do, well, in fact, I released two journals with Prima because I was missing a good journal for myself because I need a lot of dimension inside of the book because my work, no matter what I do, is always dimensional. So when I had the journals already made, I had to rip pages out of them to make some more space for me. So I usually mm -hmm. I finish with half of the pages out and then I had the space to work in. Um, so the ones I designed for Prima, they have more space and they have this elastic going around so you can, it really allows them to grow and they go like quite dimensional in the end. Right. But, and this is one of the journals I would use and they are just uh, more official, more, more uh, let's say, manufactured version of the journals I was doing for myself. So bind it with the wire, having different kind of pages inside. And the other, the other journal I love to use is, in fact, old book. I repurpose the old books. So I usually buy the vintage books on the flea market, you know, these nice hard covers with beautiful vintage covers. And, again, I rip part of the pages from the inside, make more space for me, and I work in, this, in these books. So my family journal will be exactly a good example of this. Uh, I have, I have my family journals in the um, repurposed books, in the vintage books, and I think it's perfect match. Old photos with the old book with the, some vintage oh. buttons, other elements. Beautiful. That makes sense to me. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. I like to repurpose old books for journals as well. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite art journals is a cookbook. That, oh. um, an old <laughs> cookbook I found and just... Um, went to town on it and, and started creating in it and it's actually the one I get the most comments on because it is so unique but yet uh, it incorporates my love of the yeah. old books, my love of yeah. cooking and art. It, yeah, perfect match because uh, you have everything yeah. there. Everything there, yeah. Um, what are your few top tools that you always go to? Whether it's mediums or whether it's um, um, mm. findings, go-to items. So when it comes to this typical artistic tools, I always use flat paint brushes, like the flat soft brushes, just the usual synthetic ones. I, I use it for almost everything I do. And um, I love palette knives. 
um, usually not the metal ones, but the rubber or silicone ones. I think I, these, these work better for me. When it comes to the mediums, my first choices will be always gels, the gel mediums. So this, it's a very good example when you, when you look at the my line with Prima. Art basics are my babies. So there are some modeling right. paste, there are gels, mm -hmm. and there are soft gels which are liquid version of the like multi-purpose uh, mediums. And this will be like the top products I use for gluing, for varnishing, for creating effect and textures. And these are like the, the first thing that comes to my mind. It's always on the table. Of course, I've got gesso. And gesso is um, usually in black and white. Now we also have clear, which is very exciting. But I think I'm one of the people who use quite a lot of black gesso. Because most of people think, OK, gesso is white. It makes everything ready, you know, preparing the background. I love my black gesso. It is, um, it's so cool how how the great effect you can get with the black gesso and how other colors shine beautifully on black. So that would yes. be one of my favorite uh, things. And when it comes to things I use, surely vintage paper, which is uh, vintage books, pages from the books, photos. Um, I use a lot of photos, vintage ones, and the photos of myself uh, or my family. And in, mostly in my collage, you can see some people, and this may be me or my family. And this is not because it's, it's, it's about me or my family. It's because these are the people who are close to me. So I feel better, in fact, when I cut the photo, which belongs to me in a way, than cutting the photo of somebody that I don't know, and he may be or she may right. be not happy that I did something with her <laughs> face later. So right. it's an easy way. It's easy way. So that will be it. And then I have my rubbish boxes. And rubbish boxes, these are um, collections of all these little pieces uh, that I get from flea market, some embellishments also, some uh, big cheap jewelry, some car parts, computer parts, um, clock parts, all these things in the boxes. So that will be my first thing that I always have somewhere nearby. I'd love to go to a flea market with you. I bet it would be a blast <laughs> seeing what you would find and plan to repurpose. You, you would be surprised. Um, it's really, you know, it's art of digging in the stuff that nobody really wants. Because right. uh, I pick up the things that people usually don't buy because it's old, broken, rusted. Um, or to just too small, and sometimes I just find the box that is filled with some leftovers. Some, for example, somebody's box with the old buttons, needles, threads, lace. You know, the one that you can find in the drawer of your grandmother. Right. And I would just buy the whole box as it is. Of course, pretending I'm not really interested what is inside. I'm just buying the box, right? Mm -hmm. But it's it's really an art of digging. And right. finding things that may be inspiring, and I love collecting them. That's one of the the obsessions probably I've got. I have to admit I'm a collector, so <laughs> some of my findings uh, they will be never changed into art. They will be just my home decors, and right. some of them I will repurpose. I will use them for something uh, artistic uh, in the future. So maybe they will be part of collage. Maybe they will be altered because they are big, but some of them are just, you know, my little private museum. There, I, I just right. love them the way they are. <laughs> oh, that's great. Are there uh, certain colors that you tend to work with most often? Well, black, of course. That will be my first color, and I have color combos I come back to um, quite often. So, um, combination of blue, green, and black. <laughs> combination of orange, gold orange, and strong pink, probably. Um, combination of turquoise and black. Coffee, um, and there's this color, I, ca I have an idea how to call it, this light tea stain brown. I really use mm -hmm. tea stain. And that will be my all-time favorite color for vintage projects. So the tea stain color, usually with black. 
I guess no matter what I do, there will be some black always. Got black, so right? I use black just, a lot. Too. I think it rounds the pink. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's important color. <laughs> I think it is, and I think it grounds the whole piece when you add black yes. to it. So, it's, what are it the techniques? That, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm um, just say it makes a huge difference. It adds the shadow. I'm, and people usually are sometimes um, having this feeling that putting black will ruin everything, but it's just the opposite. Right, absolutely. What are the techniques that you rely on most often? Um, creating texture in a different in a, in many ways. So whatever I do, I usually start with some texture. And that would be using stencils with paste and gels that will be gluing a lot of pieces of paper scraps or pieces of fabric in the background and then putting just so on the top. That will be um, just gluing s small flat elements I can find. I usually start most of my projects with some kind of texture. That will be my first technique. And I'm probably texture obsessed. Uh, I can't really say there will be something I do which is very flat. Even if I try to make a scrapbook page, um, on some point it's just getting dimensional and I can't really help it. I just can't. It just, it just starts to grow. I have no idea right. what's going on. I guess, just guess you can't find your, fight your nature because when you start fight, fighting it's not going to be natural anyway. So I just go with the flow. At some point, everything gets into groups, and everything starts to grow into dimension. Okay. I, I, just... think, that's why, I think that's why I've been so uh, attracted to your art, because I'm very similar. Even when I scrapbook, I always had the lumpy, bumpy pages and the layers and the texture, and I was using modeling paste in my scrapbooks way before I started playing with other forms of mixed media. So. I get that. <laughs> um, are there know, art? I, when I look at different, yeah, but when I look at different people's art, I can see so many beautiful things. Like, you know, being clean and simple is so elegant. It's so perfect. And if I would really force myself, I can do a simple page, but then I feel like I'm cheating. There is dimension missing. I have to, you right. know, it's it's <laughs> me, and it's so beautiful that we are so different from each other. I guess. Because Absolutely. it will be very boring if we are all the same. Absolutely. Uh, you were just mentioning you see other people's work and you see it's simple and it's nice. Who are some artists that you admire their work? Other mixed media artists or art journaling artists or uh, painting oh. artists? I don't really have the whole list of the names because I usually don't admire the people. I admire the projects. Because um, I I can really you know pick up a lot of projects from from different people. I would say there's something appealing in them. I mostly I would say my biggest inspiration usually comes from fine artists, not really from the uh, people. Let's say from the industry because mm -hmm. it's uh, it's out of the box and mm -hmm. it gives me a little bit more of the ideas. So. Um, if you will, uh, rec um, for example, look at some of the projects I do, you can see totally, uh, that were inspired by uh, works of Giger, the, the one who made Alien. And I right. really love his work. It's, it's very cold. His art is extremely cold. It's um, slicky. It, it's not really uh, attract like pretty in a common way, but it's fascinating. And right. all these details he did. Uh, there's a Polish artist called... Uh, Bekszynski and his art is very dark and very beautiful in a way. People would say not really enchanting for me, very, very inspiring. And I, I, I really admire works of um, people such as uh, comic artists. I, there's mm -hmm. artists who made uh, covers and artwork for the uh, Sandman series for um, Neil Gaiman, and his name was Dave McKean, and he did beautiful collage. Also, mm -hmm. it was dimensional collage together with uh, uh, painting. And just reading that, I, I was admiring the 
covers of the books because they were done in so fine way. I, I had the feeling, I want to do that one day. Ah. I, just, I just love the cover. I would love to do something like this. And if I will be able to do something like this, it means I'm quite good, right? Nice. So I was, it was thinking this way. And also, of course, the artists, such uh, names from the past as uh, Klimt or Alphonse Mucha, so the art deco style, um, that will be some of the inspirations. But as I said, mostly it is the project that catches my eye, not really the whole the whole artist as a person. Right, right great. Um, you mentioned before some of your products from Prima. Tell us a little bit about uh, your product lines. Um, the whole story started when I was um, challenged to make, um, I think, I think it should be a scrapbook line, but in short um, time it changed from the scrapbook line into the line of embellishments I called mechanicals. And these were in fact metal embellishments that were inspired by flea market objects and the main purpose was to mix and match. I wanted people to, you know, try to build a very unique look from the elements I'm giving them uh, in the packages. So, um, because that's how I work. First, when I get something, I rip it apart and then I change uh, the look of it to make it mine. So I was hoping that I will give them like the set. It's like Lego blocks. You get the elements and then whatever you create out of it is yours. So these were the metal, the first things that were really mine, metal embellishments. And I'm still working on them, so hopefully there will be the new um, edition coming in the future. And after that, um, we started working more or on the artistic uh, mixed media med medium line. So we decided to launch uh, Art Basics, which is the line of, um, as I was trying to explain, um, minimum products to get maximum effects. So. Uh -huh. um, they are uh, dimensional gels, we call them 3D gels, and they are modeling paste and light paste, and there is soft gel, and these give you so many different possibilities to create your own custom paste, custom gels, uh, effects. You could use them as varnishes, you can use them as a dimension, a dimensional effects. So again, I'm trying to give the idea that you can play, and this is your mini lab. And you take this lab, and whatever you put inside, you will, it will change into something else. You don't have to really have a huge collection of jars on your shelf. It's enough to have the basic line, and then add in whatever you like. So we created um, two supporting lines to Art Basics. One is called Art Ingredients. So these are the things that you can mix in. Okay. And, uh, I'm trying to give the ideas what you can mix in. So we have different size of beads. We've got mica powder. We've got uh, some glass glitter. We've got beautiful sets of glitter. Just to give the idea how you can create your own paste or gels out of the basic line. And um, there's a second line called Art Extravagance. And these are the ones that are already mixed. So some crackle pastes, some mm. texture special features such as graphite paste, which is extremely cool one. Oh. and it looks like, um, I'm trying to explain uh, during the demos, because it's when it's wet, it's gray. But when it's dry, it's black with a sparkle. Of course, it has nice grain in it. But if you will recall this very common object, um, nail uh, file with the black finishing on it, like the one you use for your nails, and has this black uh -huh. texture on the top. That's mm -hmm. exactly what you need from the jar <laughs> after drying. Wow. So that's that's, that's really great. nice effect. So that's that's, I that's the line. That. Um, you may be really happy about this one. It's beautiful stone effect, and you can of course paint on the top of it also. We made a lot of um, effort to make it user friendly. So there's a lot of sources uh, online when you can see the videos and when you can see the projects with that. So starting last September, I have. Eight people on my design team working with these supplies, showing tutorials twice a week. I may oh, make great. tutorials myself. So if you will go to my uh, website, to my blog, you will find huge source of videos 
um, explaining the product and also tutorial videos. Uh, different kind of people um, with different styles, not exactly my style, that was the point of having the design team, uh, using them. So we were trying to make it accessible and easy to understand for everybody and I hope people will really um, see how much potential you've got in mixed media in general, not really in the line because line is just a good example how many different effects you can get with the products which are available on the market. All right, great. Well, we'll definitely put the link on um, underneath this interview so that everyone can check out your website and take a look at those videos. I know I'm excited to see that graphite paste myself. That uh, sounds right That's up my really alley. Cool. I can't wait. Uh, so what's next for you? Do you have uh, teaching engagements or are you coming out with other lines or what do you hope to do? It's, all, uh, it's a lot of things happening in one time. I can't really tell you everything because it's, everything is super secret sure. usually. Sure. Um, um, it's the um, beginning of spring, so I'm working on the releases for winter now, which means we are closing the winter shows now. It, is, it means that I have something new on my table and I'm trying to expand the lines that we already have. I'm trying to add more interesting elements uh, to these. Um, in the same time, I'm working on the new classes um, because I teach classes, um, mostly in person classes. I don't have any online, and I'm very sorry. But um, I need to prepare new samples. Uh, the new, I, well, the ideas are ready. I just need to prepare the good uh, classroom samples to make sure they will be good in timing, good size, and uh, that's the things I'm, I'm doing now. So. In the next couple of weeks, I'll start full-time teaching again because now we finished the shows. We finished CHA, we finished uh, Creative World in Frankfurt, and we finished Stitches in Birmingham. And now it's the time for regular teaching. So I'll be traveling starting March, and I'll be in many places uh, teaching the classes again as it was last year. Okay, and the list of your upcoming classes can be found on your website as well? Yes, exactly. There's a little tab called Live Classes, and you can see the whole list of the places I'm going to visit. Uh, if the links are not active yet, it, it means the bookings are not open usually. And um, the whole year is already scheduled, except there's no, there's no speci uh, specific plan for uh, United States and Canada, it, but it's going to be done in the next couple of weeks, I, go, I hope. And uh, I'm also planning to go to Australia, New Zealand in November. So this is the thing that is just mentioned, but it's not organized yet. All okay. the other ones are basically scheduled. <laughs> okay, well, I'll be sure to look for your um, events in the United States. I'd love to catch one of your classes in person. Oh, so. thank you. So now we're going to wrap up. Go uh -huh. ahead. Um, I think no, it, will ahead. All, yeah, it will be all um, up in April. Usually April will be good because then the, we have time enough for July, July and August to plan the classes. So it will be the time when I will be looking for the places. And I'll be surely giving a shout on Facebook. I'll be giving a shout on Instagram and my blog. So... Whoever is following me, I'm sure they won't miss this message. Great. Okay. Well, we're going to finish up with just a few fun tidbits. I call this a fast five. We'll be um, uh, taking less than five minutes just to ask you some of your personal favorites. Uh, so we'll start off with, what is your favorite snack food? Um, different kinds of nuts, like macadamia nuts, peanuts. Um, walnuts, just mixture of nuts. Okay. And your favorite musical artist? You don't have to just pick one. <laughs> oh, musical artist. Mm. Uh, I have no clue. I don't really have the favorite one. Um, if you, would, my friend who looked through my list on my uh, YouTube, she said it looks like spam which means it is everything together. So I don't really have right. my favorite one. Okay. <laughs> I can go That's from okay. classical and opera 
through heavy metal, through hard rock, through you know Nancy Sinatra, everybody. And it's again the same thing when it comes to the art. I don't really admire the uh, the artist. I admire the, the songs for some art, reason. Right. Right. I'm a lot in the same. I listen to everything. I don't have one genre that I listen to. Yeah. So I get that. Okay, your favorite non art related book? Um that will be probably um uh, no, no, I'm trying to find out what is the you know, the name in English. <laughs> um One Hundred Years of Solitude by Marquez. You know the the Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude, I guess. That's the, the title. Okay. I'm, but I, I may be, I may be make, doing it wrong because I wrote, I, wrote, um, um, I, wrote, I wrote it in Polish. So I would have to Google what is the English title of it. But I'll Gabriel Garcia Marquez, yeah. You're probably very close. <laughs> um, I've seen. Is there a... I, Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it may be also 100 years of loneliness, but I think it was solitude. <laughs> but uh, I can't really tell. Okay. That's the problem of you know uh, losing some things in translation. That's the problem when you right. don't use your first language. Yeah. Right. Um, what's one TV show that you just can't miss? I don't watch TV. Okay. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> Um, Sorry. This I stopped easy. watching TV about three years ago because I had no time to do it. And right. now when I want to see something, I usually go online and from time to time I would see um, like a TV series, like you know, people who watch Game of, Games of Thrones or something, but I usually wait until they are done and then I watch everything, you know, the chapter after chapter right. because I can't really wait. So I right. don't really watch any TV series. Okay. Uh, well, with all your traveling, I'm sure that makes it hard, too. Yes, to <laughs> that's true. All right. Coffee or tea? Tea. Definitely tea. I am not a coffee drinker. I am obsessed with tea. I am addicted to tea. I've always been addicted to tea. And it's just black tea, nothing else. Okay. And finally, one odd thing we probably don't know about you. Oh, um, okay. Mm, try to think. Mm, that is really hard to, you know, think about something quickly. Uh, well, um. Probably the thing people don't know about me is how uh, really obsessed I am with um, Celtic mythology and stories, fairy tales, uh, all the books that are you know connected deeply to the uh, folk uh, stories. I love Russian fairy tales, Polish fairy tales, Irish, British, and uh, I, as a teenager, I was reading so many books related to uh, King Arthur, for example, and uh, of course the, the Knights of the Round Table, and I loved reading all these stories and seeing the relation between them, and I loved everything medieval and everything that was really ancient, and probably that's why I picked Ireland as my you know, favorite country. Everything is old here. Everything. You just go to the town and you've got... Uh, We've got a church that is built in ninth century, and oh, this is just a church. So <laughs> that I'm really obsessed with these, and um, I've always been and always sit somewhere, you know, in the back of my head. I may be not reading as many books as like, as I did in the past, but I still have these love for um, uh, for these uh, myths and legends, and that will be my big love and. Uh, that's it. That probably people don't really know. I just made a post about my name, like my nickname I use, so it's mentioned there a little bit. But that will be this part that is not really showing in my artwork or my job. So probably just my husband and my close friends know that. 
Right. Well, that's great. That's great. And maybe that's how you ended up with your spark of doing um, art, which is using vintage pieces and old pieces and um, from from that first love. But well, it's been great talking to you and getting to know you and learning about your art and your line. So um, it's we'll be sure to have all. Oh, absolutely. It's been my pleasure. And I can't wait to see when you're coming to the U.S. Hopefully the plan will be showing up soon. It was really lovely to talk to you. It was a lovely interview. I'm really honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time. And to all of our viewers, we will have all the links underneath this article so that you can watch some of the videos, see more of Finn's art and um, get to know a little bit more about her product lines and see what's out there. Also to Thank find out where me. she's teaching. So um, until next time, create something every day and uh, have a wonderful day.